Hey there, welcome back to the show. Okay, so how many of you are at the point in your business where you are ready to outsource some tasks in your business that you just don't enjoy anymore, or you're ready to hire a team member, but you just don't know where to start? No worries. My guest today dives into all things outsourcing, how to decide on what tasks to outsource, budgeting, and how to prepare for a possible virtual assistant. Meredith Raber has a full service virtual assistance agency, and I promise you're going to love her. She provides strategic marketing direction as well as manages day-to-day tasks so business owners can focus on their core business. Her goal is to serve as a trusted partner and build long-term relationships with clients. Okay, grab a pen and paper and let's dive in. Hey there, mom boss. Welcome to the Social Media for Mompreneurs podcast. I'm Allison Scholes, brand strategist and lifestyle stock photographer. And yes, I'm that boss lady in sweatpants. If you're ready to fine tune your personal brand, grow your business on social media, learn some really cool marketing hacks, all while balancing family life, then girl, you're in the right spot. And please don't be shy. You can connect with me over at bossladyinsweatpants.com. If you're ready for today's show, go ahead and hand out the kids' tablets, open those juice boxes, grab your coffee, and hide in your closet. It's time to dive in. Hello, Meredith. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, I'm excited to have you on the show today, and I'm really excited about our topic because this topic has actually been on my mind, that question of do I outsource or do I hire a virtual assistant? So I know we have a lot of listeners wondering if they should do the same. But before I jump into my questions, Meredith, if you could just take this time to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your business. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. I'm Meredith Raber. I own Meredith Raber Virtual Assistant Services where I help clients with a variety of tasks, but the majority of my clients, I help with office operations, project management, and social media management. That's awesome. And I watch what you do on Instagram and the content you put out. It's so helpful. So I know you're doing an awesome job for your clients. So today, my first question is, how do I know it's time to start outsourcing in my business? So when you discover that your day is filled with tasks that you should not be working on. So for example, say you're a coach and all of a sudden your day-to-day life is invoicing, emailing clients, but you're not coaching your clients. You're doing back end, you're doing files, you're trying to create social media posts. That's when it's really time to figure out how you can outsource and get some of these tasks off your list so you can work on you know, what you're passionate about and what the core of your business is. So how do I prepare to bring on a new team member? Because I feel a little stuck in this where I'm getting to the point, I I love podcasting and I have a list of episodes that I want to record, but then I'm also finding myself spending hours and hours editing, even though I enjoy the editing process. But I'm wondering, is it... Will I make more of an impact if I outsource the editing and record more episodes? So how do I prepare for something like that? Yes, your example is perfect. So if you think about all the hours you're putting into editing, yes, you like it. Yes, you do a great job at it, but someone else could be doing that. And while those editing hours could be shifted to someone else, you could be recording more podcast episodes and getting out to your community more. So you kind of have to look at it as how are you scaling your business? Yes, you can do it. Everybody thinks, you know, they can do everything, but you can't. And that's okay. People want to hear more of you and your podcast episodes and they don't really care if you're you're editing them or somebody else is editing them. Um, What I like to say is when you are starting um, to think about outsourcing is even though it's just you, you're a solo entrepreneur, start putting processes in your business. You know, either process documents, uh, Zoom videos or Loom videos where you just record yourself doing something. This is how I onboard a client. This is how I like to do social media posts. This is how... And start just saving them. 
And as you're doing them, don't, it won't take extra time. Just the next time you do it, just record yourself, save it. And then you have a process. Or if you do social or Facebook ads a certain way or certain things like that, the next time you do one, record yourself doing it. So then when someone new comes onto your team, you already have recordings, you already have processes. Yes, you're gonna have to talk them through some things, but you've already got this you know, bank of information for them to look through and then they can come back to you with questions. How do you go about finding team members? So do you suggest going out in your social networks and start asking, do you like, um, a lot of people might use Fiverr. There's a lot of like people on Fiverr that offer virtual assistant work, but that's more project by project. project based. Yeah. So how does someone determine the kind of person, because that's actually a really good question, where Fiverr is it really is. project to project, but a virtual assistant is a team member and they will just know month by month what to do. So how do you kind of determine what's right for your business? I think it also depends, it depends on what you're looking for. So exactly what you just said, if you're just looking for help with one project, a place like Fiverr could work. But if you're looking for a long-term teammate, um, what you really need to determine is what skills does this person need? What am I looking for? Um, and once you figure all of that out, because you need to be prepared too. You can't just say, I need a virtual assistant. Virtual assistants do a million things. Like you can get highly skilled virtual assistants that will do automations and landing pages and websites. You can get a virtual assistant who does per calendar management. I mean, there's a thousand things they can do. So you really need to figure out what am I looking for help with? Am I looking for help with social media? Okay, I need someone who is focused on social media management. That would be a great place to go out on your social networks and be, I'm hiring. Does anybody know anyone? Send me referrals. Are you a virtual assistant that does social media? DM me. That would be a great place. Another place is Facebook groups. Facebook groups are a great place, whether they are virtual assistant Facebook groups or you know different Facebook group groups just for entrepreneurs or masterminds that you're in, you can just say, hey, I'm looking for a graphic designer or someone that can do Canva templates or like for you, editing. Does anybody know of an editor? Um, and that's when you start collecting the people that would be good to look at. It's very important to have them to always do a video conference with them, get to know their personalities. But going into that video conference call, Prepare yourself, have good questions for them, depending on what you're looking to outsource. Is a time zone a big difference, a big you know, game changer for you? Do you want them on your calendar? So do they need to be on the West Coast or the East Coast, depending on where you are? Um, things like that are a big, big, um, big challenge sometimes. But if you're just looking for help on a weekly basis, so it doesn't really matter if they're working at night and in the morning, those things don't matter to you. Um, and I think really just preparing yourself for what you're looking for, setting up expectations from the beginning, from the first interview um, to when you actually hire them on and telling them, you know, you know, when, when are you going to get back to me? Are you a 24 hour turnaround? Do you return things in 48 hours? Those are important things that, can be set up right from the beginning. Now, here's another really good question because I'm sure we have a lot of listeners going, yep, I'm ready to outsource, but here's their next question. How do I budget this new team member into my monthly budget? Because I know for a fact, I mean, Fiverr alone, you can have a project that costs you 10 bucks and then someone else offers it for a hundred bucks. And same goes with virtual assistants, their hourly rate or maybe a weekly rate are so different. So how does a solopreneur or a mompreneur start to think about that budgeting process? Like where do they start? So it's important to know that, as you said, virtual assistants run their own business. So everybody structures their packages hours a little bit differently. So the most common is you're going to see an hourly rate. So five hours a week at $25 an hour, or you'll get a weekly rate, like you just said, you know, $250 a week for this specific service, 
or most most of the time you'll get a monthly package rate. So $350 for a monthly package of a certain amount of hours. So what I like to tell people to do is figure out your monthly budget. I wouldn't do a week to week type situation. When you're you're thinking, okay, I feel comfortable outsourcing, you know, $400 a month, okay. But also you need to figure out what are the skills you're looking for? I mean, you're not going to get, you know, for if say you only have $250 a month, you could still get a VA. That's you totally can. But you need to figure out how many hours do I need them? What are the skills they need? You know, you have to have your expectations with the skills you're looking for. You can't get a VA for $15 an hour that does Infusionsoft and can run your website and redesign everything. It's just the way it is. So I think also it's figuring out, um, what the skills you're asking for um, and what the charge would be for that sort of thing. But I think when you're starting out, figure out a budget you're comfortable with. If it's $250 a month, that's great. You can get help for that. And that can, you know, even if it's five or 10 hours, that's a lot of hours in a month. Like you won't think that at first, like what's that going to do for me? You're going to figure it out really fast that that's going to give you, you know, two days back of your working days that you can work on sales or you can work on, you know, the things that never get done on your list. So, um, I think that's the best way to start out. So I just thought of a question when someone is preparing to bring on a team member or hire a virtual assistant, they might have several people in mind and they have their hourly rate and they they know what skills they have. What is the process of determining who you're going to hire? Like in your opinion, what makes a good virtual assistant? I think a lot of it is yes, skills, but I think personality too. I think depending on what you're looking for, are you looking for someone to handle client care? You need someone who is attentive, who's going to be on your email inbox every single day or, you know, checking it three times a day? Or are you looking for a social media manager who is creative and, you know, can get engagement for you? I think there's lots of different things depending on what you're looking for. Um, but I do think for a virtual role, I think being in communication constantly, whether it be, you know, every client's different, whether it's phone, email, Slack, you know, however you guys talk, you know, knowing like, hey, I just did this, this is the update, um, being in constant communication in our virtual world is very important. Um, also, you know, them letting you know if you send something over, can, can this be done? You know, replying, saying, yes, I can get this done in two days or whatever it is that you need. Um, also, I think someone who's passionate about what you're doing, it always makes a difference. Like when I, you know, pick to work with certain clients, it's because I love their business. and It's not just because I'm taking on a new client. It's because I want to help them. And I'm always looking for long-term clients as you guys should be looking for long-term virtual assistants. You don't want someone that's only going to work out for two months because by the time you train them, they're moving on or you're moving on because you're like, oh, they only worked out for that one project. So sometimes that, you know, that type of relationship might cost you a little bit more, but in the long run, you're keeping someone, you know, for two, three years and they're really, you know, your right hand man when it comes to your business. And then as your relationship grows and you know more of their skills, you can give them more. And then, you know, as your budget expands, you can say, hey, take on this part too. Would you be able to do this? Is this something you'd be interested in? And so it's helpful. Also, I think when it turns into more of a partner relationship, it's just another set of eyes in your business asking questions or being like, have you ever thought of this? Like, I had a client that did it this way. Have you thought of doing that? So it's always good to get new ideas. I love that you said that. And you touched on a key point when you said a long-term relationship, because I think a lot of our listeners might be struggling with, well, I want to bring someone on, but I don't know if I want this person long-term or short-term. So for example, maybe someone wants to do like a webinar in a few weeks, but they need a lot of help with like the graphics and the email and nurturing that email list. That could be a quick short-term relationship by using Fiverr. But if you want someone 
who is going to always handle, let's just say email marketing. Well, you're always emailing. Mm -hmm. So that's when you want to bring someone on long term. Would you agree with that difference? Yeah. And also, I would say another spin to that, too, is say, like you said, there's a webinar coming up and there's someone you've been thinking about that could potentially be long term. But you just let them know, hey, I've got a project. Would you be willing to, you know, do this for me for, you know, two months, three months, whatever. Um, then you can kind of see how your working relationship works out. It could be like a little test, you know, do I love working with them? What, what would I like about, what would I like differently? Or is this great? And maybe I'll keep them on. So I think even project work, most VAs will take on project work um, along with retainer clients. Um, and it's also good for them to get to know the clients too. You know, maybe they love working with you and they're like, anything you want, I'll do. Or they were like, oh, this was, you know, not really up my alley or maybe my skill set isn't great for this. So I think it's good for both people. That's awesome. So last question, what is the interview hiring process like? Because I think that gets to the scary part. <laughs> So what I would recommend when you're ready to take the plunge and hire someone is kind of what we said before, really sit down and write down the tasks you want to outsource. And then along with those tasks, think about what are the skills that go along with these tasks? Is it social media management? Is it calendar management? Is it email inbox? You know, just write a list. And then also in your um, business, what are the programs you're using within those tasks? Are you using Asana? Are you using Trello? Are you using Hootsuite? You know, whatever you use for social media, they need to know how to use that. A lot of these things can be trained on, but maybe you don't have the time. So you need someone, you know, that knows how to use it. Um, next is I would put together some specific questions to your business. You know, are you passionate about photography specifically, like for yours? Do you like photography? What time zone are you in? When will you return my emails? Is it a 24 hour turnaround? Is it 48 hours? Will you communicate on my team Slack channel? Say you have a team of five other people. You know, there's a lot of people gonna be going back and forth. Are you comfortable with that? Um, specific to your business because when you're interviewing it's also your job to figure out if this person's gonna work out you know just because you got a referral from a friend doesn't mean that that person is perfect you know they might be a great person but that doesn't mean that their skill set fits your needs and then um, after you go through I always recommend if you can to interview you know three to five um, video calls with people just to figure out, you know, is there a personality there, that, that sort of thing. And then from there, um, you know, obviously they'll send you their rates, their packages, depending on the needs that you discussed in your call and then evaluate, you know, did, was there one you, that was, you know, the best out of them or did you like a lot of them? And then it kind of comes down to rates and what you can afford. So that's the way I would go about it. I love that and that you clarified a lot that I'm sure that's going through the heads of our listeners. So before we end the show, and this show had a ton of information in it, and I'm sure we're going to have people that are going to want to reach out to you, Meredith, because I know you have a lot of information on your website. So where can they find you? Oh, MeredithRaber.com. Awesome. And I know you're on Instagram a lot. Is it also at Meredith Raber? I'm at Meredith Raber VA. Awesome. All right, Meredith, thanks so much for being on the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for tuning in today. If you loved today's episode and walked away with value, then please head over to iTunes, social media for mompreneurs, and leave a review and subscribe to the channel. This would make my day. And don't forget to connect with me on Instagram at Allison Shoals or grab some freebies over at bossladyandsweatpants.com. Take care. I'll see you next time.